Welcome. Thanks for joining the session. I'm Arne Arnold. I'm at Red Hat in the Realby the product manager for our mission critical workloads. So that includes SAP and a few more, which we actually uh, care about and uh, has pointed as a strategic workload. And so today's session will be about S4 HANA migrations. Uh, and uh, so, I mean, it's the topic in the space of SAP, and so maybe to just act, um, yeah, to just check the audience a little bit, who of you is, is actually running SAP? Wonderful. Uh, how much of you are in the migration to S4, Anna? Okay. Anyone already completed the migration? Wonderful. Great mix. Um, so I probably don't have to go into too much detail actually what is involved. I uh, also assume that you know about who SAP actually is. I catched a new fact sheet, so um, it's actually quite, quite impressive also in terms of numbers, total revenue just in 2021, uh, even bumped up further to almost 28 billion of, uh, I think it's years of revenue, more than 100,000 employees, so definitely a, a, a big leader in the business of enterprise application and uh, a partner of Red Hat uh, since more than 20 years, 23 I think it's now, 24. Uh, it was 1999 when SAP was bringing R3 to Linux and uh, since then the partnership, the partnership between Red Hat and SAP exists as this was back then, also supporting to Red Hat Linux. So I mean, over the time SAP further evolved into the company which it is now with the entire suite of um, products which they offer. Also Red Hat has further evolved into a leader in open source technology, not just the operating system, but also other technologies, uh, hypervisor automation, integration, all the way now to, uh, to containers with OpenShift. And um, that is also visible in the timeline where Actually, the topics between the two companies had been further evolved by constantly working together, making sure that products are certified on the corresponding platforms, uh, and also the collaboration in the engineering is happening. For example, uh, working with a uh, you know, SAP Data Hub or um, SAP Data Intelligence team to actually bring that on top of OpenShift. So, that's just a little bit of the history uh, between the two companies and uh, why we have also SAP here at, at the event. You may have seen the booth, you may have actually stopped by, had a few conversations. And what I would actually like to talk now a little bit more is actually how we actually can help in the migration uh, to S4 HANA. And so, I mean, yeah, anyone can modernize SAP, but in the end, we talk about mission critical, so it is about our scalability, about our speed, but also about, uh, yeah, um, doing it right, and so it is about best practices. And I mean, Red Hat is a leader in open source technologies and infrastructure, but we may not necessarily have the answers to all those questions. So if you are on a project to migrate to S4HANA and you ask yourself, okay, do I uh, yeah, actually keep the data uh, into the new system, or should I actually clean the data before, should I do it in a hybrid world, in an on-prem world, should I do it in the cloud, should I use... SAP rise over many questions which uh, you need to get an answer to. And so while I personally have an SAP background and had worked 10 years there, it's still tough for me to get the answers everywhere. So what do we do at Red Hat? Um, we are built around the idea of open source, open source community. So we actually work together with partners. And so we do also in the SAP space. So we actually had uh, have, have built up a bigger network of partners who actually have the expertise in the, in the corresponding steps of the S4HANA migration and work together with them and you to actually bring you through that journey. And so this is just an illustration of the different phases which you may have gone through, those who already finished the S4HANA migration or at least uh, um, still are looking into if it's still in front of us. And so everything starts with analysis. I just mentioned uh, a few aspects. If you um, are now on the existing system and you want to move to S4 HANA, it's not just an upgrade which you apply to the system, um, but uh, actually you will need to understand, okay, how customized is your system today? Uh, what are the things which are in the target, uh, in, in, in the target S4 stack, which uh, actually map to, to to that of what quality is my data, what data do I need to archive, what data do I, do I need to transform. So 
A lot of things will actually happen here, and those will be the input to the next step, which is when the actual integration and pre-project, where you then have to map out how the new system landscape looks like, uh, and uh, how, you're, how you actually want to build that up. Uh, we had a few words earlier around for Greenfield, which goes into there, and then ultimately you want to go into the execution, actually roll out that system, uh, which you may still do on-prem, or which you may want to do in the cloud. Uh, you may leverage SaaS offerings as S400 Public Cloud by SAP combined with existing assets of systems which you don't migrate at the same step, all the way into the innovation um, pillar where you then want to uh, yeah, rebuild the end-to-end -end business process by um, yeah, en enhancing the the stack with custom code, with third-party apl apl applications. Uh, so that does not necessarily mean that it looks like how, how your old system had been. As I said earlier, there may be things which are now in the standard. There may be other things which are no longer in the standard. So those are things which you want to go through. And as I said, for all those pillars, there are experts uh, which work with SAP closely to actually provide the, the, the corresponding tools and and best practices on the analyst phase, we are having um, some, some, some partners like Vestrex, where we also had some customer stories public on reddit.com who help in the analysis. We have uh, um, yeah, the interpretation and the execution step where we work with partners like Devo Team together who help us to actually automate that part of, of a chain and the configuration and the systems all the way into the innovation space um, where we again work, work together with partners who can help to then um, build those yeah, containerized extensions to actually enhance the, the business functionality of what, what SAP has. That said, it should already make clear that, that it's actually not just about Red Hat Enterprise Linux as a basis of your S4 HANA system, but actually when you go through an S4 HANA migration, you touch all those different technologies. You have to think about uh, where does my HANA database run on? Yes, that needs to be a Linux operating system, and so that brings many customers from different platforms first time to Red Hat Enterprise Linux. But it also means that you have to think about where does my um, how does my application development happen? Is that on the SAP Business Technology Platform? Uh, is that um, somewhere outside uh, of it? It's, is it a combination of it all the way to how does my deployment look like? I already said you may consume certain parts from SAP Software as a Service, but you may still run uh, other parts of your SAP applications a little bit longer because you will not shift overnight uh, if you have a more complex environment. Uh, or you may also depend on third-party application or, or legacy application which actually generates the data which SAP is operating on. I will touch on that in one of the customer scenarios later on. And so it's a combination of all those different technologies uh, which we uh, on the Reddit side have in, in the portfolio to support you on the S4 HANA migration. What I wanted to do for our talk today, because I mean, um, we are here at the um, at a Reddit event, uh, which is that we somehow need to bridge a little bit with both worlds. We have on one side we have the SAP experts, and on the other side we have a technology expert uh, on the on the on the Reddit side. So, for it, let's start a little bit with the use cases, uh, and and then we can dive in a little bit into the technologies which we use. And if there are questions left, then we can have those at the end of the session, or you can stop me after the session um, to actually get further answers to that. So picking three examples, uh, one is WWSET, uh, which is more closer to the first aspect which I showed, the enterprise Linux under the S4 stack, uh, then expanding into another customer, which we also saw this morning in the keynote, which is a Spanish customer at Zepsar. Uh, and then uh, rounding out with Tokyo Electron, uh, which shows a little bit how you can use technologies like integration and OpenShift to actually um, yeah, uh, enhance your, your SAP environment on the way to S4 HANA. Good. What was the challenge which WWZ had? Or maybe Starting with who, who WWZ is, uh, it's a customer in Europe, more precise in uh, Switzerland. Um, they are providing um, yeah, 
energy, uh, internet, water services to, um, to the residents in the Canton Souk. And uh, they had been challenged by their competition to actually improve the speed and the quality of their services which they provide to their end customers. Uh, so we all know that from our private lives that we are now used to have those mobile apps to see our consumption on energy and all that stuff. So um, that is where we're looking into to actually uh, get the necessary performance by uh, migrating to the S4 HANA environment as a basis for their end, uh, end user services. Uh, but their challenge had been that their former SAP system was not based on Linux, but that they actually run that on a different operating system. And so um, they had been part of that group who actually first time needed to get the HANA system to Linux. And they have looked into the options which we have and uh, decided to pick Red Hat Enterprise Linux because it had uh, the necessary best practices and uh, tailoring for the SAP workload built-in. So Red Hat Enterprise Linux, I guess, is known in that audience. It has enterprise in its name, so uh, it's, uh, it's uh, coming with a lot of tooling and certification to meet the needs of an enterprise workload at scale. But yet, if we talk about business-critical workloads like an SAP, Backend, then you have additional requirements which you raise to that system, which usually are around, okay, I further want to reduce risk, but I really have a, a stable and trusted environment across my landscape. I also want to ensure that I have ex extensibility in that system, because if I build up an SAP system, it will last for maybe a decade. Uh, you also need to have the supportability throughout the stack. Uh, and uh, that means that uh, you, you are not just looking for the next six months which we um, have in the C stream, uh, but that you really want to ensure that once you have built up a system and certified it end to end, that you can uh, maintain that, that version of the stack a little bit longer. And ultimately, if you talk about an in memory database like HANA, then of course also performance is a bigger topic. So, those are more or less the additional asks which we had been receiving from customers running SAP on top of Red Hat, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, which we then built the corresponding SAP offering around providing exactly those capabilities like high availability, live kernel patching, the extended support, and uh, now also added insights. And so this was the, the, yeah, the, um, the convincing part for WWSET to actually say, okay, yes, we want to go to S4HANA with Red Hat, with Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Uh, as a basis, and so they um, did that migration and actually uh, yeah, they gained out of it this uh, improved efficiency because they leveraged the automation capabilities which we have in, in the product with the real system roles, easily being able to roll out the, the operating system uh, and also the SAP components. Uh, they also valued a lot the, the reduced risk from a security aspect. Um, we have, uh, building on top of the certifications uh, and, and public validations we have and um, the tooling insights rel. Uh, and last but not least, also by leveraging automation, they also reduce the human error in, in, in the process, which they had not before. And so um, overall, the customer was actually able to migrate to S4HANA successful with the Reddit and Proceedings for SAP solutions. The other example which I picked uh, is Zepser, um, which uh, is an oil and gas company in Spain. They had been a Red Hat customer before they migrated to S4, leveraging Ansible a lot um, in, in you know, to automate their processes. Uh, actually, not necessarily the Red Hat Ansible, but also using the open, open source AWX version. Uh, and so they, they, they already had built that habit of doing things in an automated way, but at the moment where actually they looked into the migration to S4 HANA, they realized that this is actually yeah, a bigger project. Uh, they wanted to do it automated, but they didn't feel comfortable in actually doing that alone. So they reached back to us uh, and to our professional service organization to actually help them uh, on implementing Ansible uh, as part of their S4 HANA migration. And so the, 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 the key value which they actually get out of that was um, the, the Ansible platform sub subscription and the 
Red Hat Automation Hub because that provided them with a platform where they can build the corresponding artifacts for that S4 migration. So um, I don't know as to how for Ansible, you have a Red Hat Automation Hub, the Ansible platform subscription is known here, but basically it provides you with a, with a single entry point where you can um, be a built on existing Red Hat certified content. So you can go into a Google-like search, you can uh, uh, look up for existing building blocks which are part of your stack. So if you want to run SAP on an um, on an Azure hypervisor with some third-party uh, firewalling tooling. You can just look for the, for the corresponding vendors. You will get all those certified content packages and you can then build on top so that you can focus on the orchestration workflow instead of rebuilding all those um, lower level tooling. The next thing which was very important for that customer is that it comes with this entire workbench of uh, managing development at scale, so I can actually have a team who is, uh, which is using the Reddit Automation Hub to uh, create content, to check in the content, to do a li uh, have a life cycle management of the content. Uh, and so while actually working in a distributed fashion, the team was able to actually uh, leverage the content which was generated by different teams. Uh, through, through the platform and ultimately, of course, also the topic of trust played a role here because at the moment where you base your automation on Red Hat certified content, you have all the benefits and um, which you are also gaining by other product subscription, meaning that you can actually get back to Red Hat open, open a case if you need an extension or if something does not work, but you also uh, rely on uh, the, the testing which is happening in the QA procedures. Uh, so um, if I actually translate that to what we do in the SAP space, we are, for example, testing our rail system roles for SAP in a nightly fashion against SAP workloads. So whenever something changes either on our side or SAP side, we will find that in those testing quite early. And so leveraging Ansible Automation Platform as part of their S4 migration project actually helped them quite a bit. So um, the result was an increased productivity, but it was also a save of more than 6,000 man hours in, in that automation approach, which uh, yeah, um, uh, act, actually resulted in more than 400 IT operations being, uh, being automated. Uh, and uh, so all in all, they were able to actually do the S4 migration uh, with the support of Ansible within a couple of months. Um, and even beyond that, they are now still heavily using their Reddit Automation Hub to uh, you know, automate all their day two operations around the S4 system. So whenever there is a new task coming, they uh, write those corresponding playbooks um, so that the next time a similar re request comes in, we can do that by by a click of a button, ideally. Last example, which I wanted to highlight here, is the example of Tokyo Electron. Tokyo Electron is a, um, yeah, it's a company which produces the, um, yeah, the manufacturing equipment for the, for the semiconductor business. And uh, they had the challenge that they had been historically growing, they had been quite distributed, they had all those different factories with their own systems. And by uh, new financial uh, laws, they actually had, had to um, yeah, rebuild that landscape and actually integrate all into one system, where they also picked SAP and S SAP S400 as the system to, to actually go to. Um, but the challenge here was that on one side we had a, a, a quite rigid deadline because this needed to be fulfilled by end of the year. But on the other side, we had a lot of legacy applications in their manufacturing sites which actually produce the data. And so coming back to that slide, which I had at the very beginning, the question for them was, was really um, how, how do I get from the existing ECC system to, to S4 with, I think they had roughly about 45% of custom code in, in, in their system. Um, uh, and, and so how much of that code can be just taken over to save some time? Uh, how much can be actually done uh, in a more um, future ready fashion, meaning that you really invest the time on data cleansing and uh, analysis because you know that this system will stay for a longer time? How do I actually manage the dependencies between the S4 system, uh, which uh, 
will be run in a cloud environment uh, and the stuff which actually remains on-prem. So that had been all those questions where the customers struggled a lot to actually find the right balance in terms of how much I actually take from the existing stack into the new S4 HANA system versus really uh, starting Greenfield and, and, and implementing it fresh. And so the, the technologies which helped the customers here had been a combination out of Reddit integration and Reddit of OpenShift. Um, and it was a kind of two-step approach. So the first step was really to uh, connect the S4 HANA system, which had been built up in the cloud, uh, to all those source systems in the factories and in the satellite offices. And the challenge here ha uh, had been quite technical in nature. I mean, the S4 HANA system uh, is not necessarily supporting all the same APIs as the old systems had. So you had to ensure that we had uh, some protocol transformations happening between those systems. You also needed to ensure that there is an end-to-end -end, uh, secure connection. As I said, it's actually a hybrid setup where you have things running on-prem and things running in the cloud. Um, you um, had to and, and ensure that you do some data cleansing in, in between. And so the fact that uh, there is actually the SAP Open API Hub, uh, which on the Red Hat side we have certified integration with, with our Red Hat integration solution, helped the customer a lot to spin up that connectivity quite fast and ensure that the customer was able to focus on bringing up the S4 HANA system while not touching those, those um, you know, smaller legacy systems in, in their factories. In the next step, they then looked into what can be actually um, done to better scale. Because, I mean, if you now have our S4 HANA system, which is quite powerful from a technology, also scalable in the cloud, you're still depending on those um, systems which I just mentioned. And so um, the customers then started in the next step to actually containerize those applications and have and breaking up this former uh, um, monolithic in environment into smaller containerized applications, which then allowed the customers step by step to actually uh, change their implementations of their source systems, uh, bring it to a, to a level where it was able to scalable by the number of, of, of containers, um, and also being able to actually move them a little bit easier around, so move a few of them also into into the cloud, which then um, is also a cost saving in terms of data, which, which goes between the systems. Uh, and it also helped the customer to uh, reach a, a higher availability of their overall stack. Um, and so if we skip to the next slide, um, according to the customer, he actually reached 100% system availability uh, in, in that time frame. Uh, they also saw uh, improved developer productivity with the containerized environment uh, and they simplified their integration of newer applications through the use of Reddit integration, uh, ultimately helping the customer to achieve the project goal, which was a goal live before the end of the year uh, of the S4 HANA system and hence um, serving the need of a business to be on the new financial reporting for the starting fiscal year. There's one more example which I add here, uh, which is our recent uh, press announcement which we did together with SAP. So also SAP themselves is meanwhile uh, using more Red Hat Enterprise Linux uh, to support their SAP RISE business. Uh, so um, if you are running SAP, then you know that you have options to actually either deploy S4 HANA in your own data center or to use that or, or to consume that as a software as a service offering. And so if you do that, if you look into the, the cloud edition of S, S4 HANA, then uh, you will be able to also leverage that uh, in, the, in, in the knowledge that this is now also using more and more of a Red Hat technology. Uh, and while we are talking here and still have two and a half hours more until the actual uh, yeah, evening, evening pub crawl starts, our colleagues in EMIR who are attending the SAP EMIR Sapphire uh, are already past that point. And uh, unfortunately, the picture is not coming up. That's sad. Um, we wanted to share the, the LinkedIn post of a colleague which I just uh, 
shared. So um, who actually met Christian Klein at the at the at the event, talking a little bit about what we can do to you know, further um, um, you know, uh, level up that partnership between SAP and Red Hat in context of SAP Rise. So uh, great, great having SAP here on on the event in Boston, and same wise we also at the event in Emir and. Uh, here, making sure that we can continue that, co that collaboration between the two companies. If you want to read more about those case studies, then uh, you can actually follow the link which is here on the slide. So uh, we had been working over the last months with a lot of our partners to uh, actually have also those joint customer stories. So um, the partners which I mentioned earlier, Vestrex, uh, uh, Devo Team, uh, the cloud provider. So if you are actually looking into a specific combination of running SAP on a specific hyperscaler with a specific partner, that's the place to go to actually see on the, on the success stories uh, to give you a little bit more glimpse on actually what had been done already. And with that, I would just like to shift it a little bit over into a more technology focused uh, um, part of the session, uh, talking a little bit about what, what are the things which we actually do in our products to, uh, and, yeah, to tailor the offerings which we have for the needs of the SAP applications. And, um, one aspect here, and I mentioned it earlier in the example of WWSAT, is the work which we do in the area of security, which had been an increased focus. I mean, a couple of years back, it may have been okay to actually wait for the next maintenance window to patch the system. Uh, this is no longer acceptable in, uh, in nowadays, so security is a very visible topic, and so um, um, that goes through the stack uh, on the SAP application level all the way down into the infrastructure. And so we have a team of Red Hatters working on site as a, at the SAP headquarter to um, to actually um, make sure that we gain the necessary best practices, how the technologies which we ship in Red Hat Enterprise Linux can be used for SAP, so that um, maybe uh, some documentation how to enable SA Linux with, um, with the SAP HANA database, that maybe how you can use network-bound disk encryption to protect your SAP system from, from um, physical security threats uh, that uh, may be uh, the use of the FA policy daemon to ensure that certain processes are not being able to execute it on an SAP environment, uh, all the way to the more general things which you do in RHEL with the FIPS compliance, with uh, working as part of the open source security foundation on, on a secure on a secure supply chain, uh, or also the, the including of the open S, SCAP tooling, which is a security scanner which you get with a real subscription uh, to ensure that your system actually is on a, um, yeah, on a level of, of patches and versions which um, does not oppose you to a higher security threat. And so you will be able to download those slides. You will be able to read a little bit more of the text. So sorry for that, but it does not come through. Um, that is probably a session on its own. Uh, that's why I just wanted to go a little bit into the highlight, but not uh, into the level of detail. But as I said, if you have specific questions, we can do that later on as well. One topic which I also want to highlight, which uh, I think was also visible throughout one or other session here at the event, uh, is the topic of Red Hat Insights. Red Hat Insights is a proactive analytic monitoring and management tool which we have for, um, for our offerings. And so I usually compare it in that kind of audience with what SAP is doing with Early Watch. Uh, so if you are using Early Watch, then you uh, receive a similar service for your application level, where you get information about the health of your system uh, so that you um, don't wait until there is actually an issue, but uh, that you see upfront that there is a need to act. Red Hat Insights provides a similar kind of service for the infrastructure level, where you uh, actually will get warnings and advisories if um, performance stability or the availability of a system is at risk. Um, you will be also able to do a drift analysis between a yeah, baseline and an actual system which you are monitoring. Uh, you can uh, also use um, insights to actually create an image which is more fitted to the needs of your workloads. Um, so all that helps in the operation of your system. 
Uh, if you switch over to security, when Insights provides you with uh, flagging of uh, CVEs, which your system may be exposed to. Uh, meanwhile, we also enhance that to have a malware detection in, in Insights. Um, you can uh, do a compliance check, um, referencing back to the Open SCAP tool, which I mentioned earlier, uh, which, is, which is part of that check. And you can also check against policies, which either uh, yeah, are coming from Red Hat or which you can build yourself uh, if the system is actually complying to that policy, all the way to then also su support you in the patching. Uh, and more on the business side of things, you can use insights to actually overlook your, your, your deployments to be in a good shape from a subscription point of view as well as from a resource consumption point of view. So that's roughly the overview of things which you can do with insights. As I said, it's continuously being, being enhanced uh, nowadays. More and more also the platform where you go to not just get worse information and analytics, but also to actually trigger actions through, um, through the whole life cycle. Um, what is the interesting aspect here is that we have enhanced that with uh, the corresponding SAP application knowledge. So Insights is capable to identify that the system is running an SAP application. And at the moment where it detects what it is used in the SAP context, it's also gathering additional information like the SAP system ID or like the instance number. And so all the things which you see here now are suddenly getting further uh, enhanced in terms of value because you're no longer applying that on the flat list of a thousand hosts, but you're now applying that in context of the SAP application. Meaning I can now actually do a drift analysis in a cluster, in a scale-out cluster, um, and get information that uh, I actually have an SAP system spending five nodes. One node is somehow configured differently, uh, and so I see that quite easily and I know, okay, I have to act now on that host so that all, all the systems are in sync again. Uh, I also get advisories, not just for the operating system, but I also get now advisories for the SAP workload. So if there is any recommendation for kernel settings, for tuning par parameters, for, for, for file system permissions, uh, which are derived from the work with, with SAP, you will get those in, 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 in insights for the SAP systems. Uh, you can also come up with policies uh, which may differ between a production system and a test dev system because you now have a system ID of a system and you can actually say, say that certain policies should be only applied to my production system. And of course, also in terms of, um, yeah, uh, of um, risk, and yeah, it is important to know, okay, is this CVE vulnerability now affecting my production system or is it a test test system? So having that information right in that place suddenly uh, helps a lot to actually use those tools that you have in insights in context of your SAP workloads. And um, yeah, if I haven't mentioned or if you haven't heard it from other presentations, Reddit's Insights uh, is part of a subscription, so it's not something which uh, you need to buy separately. You just need to connect the system, you need to activate it, uh, and it's ready to use. Uh, it had been part of Rail for Sub Solutions for a while. Meanwhile, it is also available uh, as part of the general Red Hat Enterprise Linux subscription. Another pillar where we um, work closely with SAP and also continue to expand the, the collaboration is in the area of high availability. Uh, so here we have SAP certified solutions on top of RHEL HA add-on. And I want to emphasize it's really not just what we say, okay, you can use RHEL and versus the RHEL H add-on, which more or less is pacemaker and scripts and all that stuff, but we really do development on top of it by providing you with the corresponding resource agents and uh, scripts to have turnkey ready solutions to make those SAP applications high available uh, and um, yeah, provide the corresponding documentation and as I said, also do the certification with SAP, but also from an SAP point of view, uh, this is actually, um, yeah, fulfilling all the requirements which SAP has to a cluster manager. And so um, it started historically independent. There had been the application server HA scenarios, uh, and we had then added the HANA, the HANA HA scenarios. Meanwhile, with S4 HANA, both worlds come together, so this is more, more combined now. Um, and you see that there is all those kind of different deployments which you may have. You have a two-node cluster, you have a multi-node cluster in terms of a database. You may want to have uh, all, yeah, all the replication in a sequence, or you may want to use a multi-target where you can have multiple targets in a 
some star topology. You may want to deploy that in the cloud where you actually have overlapping systems to save costs and not have uh, individual instances for, for each and every test staff system, but actually share that between the systems. Um, and we are also further expanding that now in our work with SAP to enrich um, the, um, the offering to additional scenarios like um, we have a Hyundai Index server crash restart, uh, which we had been seeing a lot of interest on the customer side to actually see that also handled by the cluster instead of inside the HANA database itself. Another area where we work closely with SAP uh, is the area of automation. And so I um, talked a little bit about automation as part of a Zepser example that was, however, more in the area of Ansible platform subscription. We do also have automation as part of the operating system, so that is what we do with the rail system roles. Rail system roles, uh, in general, uh, should help you to set up the operating system uh, uh, also outside of the SAP context. So in that example, I actually highlighted a, a little bit what you can do in the area of security. So a lot of things which I mentioned earlier to, um, to be in focus also for SAP applications and where we have corresponding best practices like SE Linux or NBDE or crypto policies and SSH. We provide automated setup offers, um, offers tooling inside the operating system and uh, the, the interesting aspect is that rel system roles actually try to provide an abstraction uh, which you can use to then build an orchestration on top of it so you can use rel system roles on the command line you can call them through satellite or you can uh, you have come up with an ansible play playbook which is calling them and the api actually is stable across the major releases so uh, if we actually have a system role for the configuration of NBDE and you write a script on top of it and you change from rel 8 to rel 9 this should actually be stable and uh, allow you to just continue to use your orchestration workflow while the underlying version is changing. And that concept we also have expanded to SAP, where we have corresponding rail system roles for SAP applications uh, to prepare the operating system in regards of best practices, kernel settings, files, everything which is needed to actually start the installation and also have a basic integration in terms of HANA installation, S4 installation, where you can also use real system roles to spin up those systems within you know, a few hours uh, instead of doing a manual installation with the corresponding tools. So talking about automation, I think we all know that day one installation is fine, but usually it happens once in the lifetime of a system. What really gets interesting is in the operation. And so that is also something where we have been working with SAP and with a broader community to look into, okay, what can we do to provide automation also for the, for the day two tasks? And so here we um, have started to expand the installation to um, give a more um, general topics like, okay, an upgrade of an, of an SAP kernel, an upgrade of the SAP HANA system, changing of the parameter configuration, the services, adding users, so the things which uh, are in the life of an SAP basis admin. Uh, and we provide those as Red Hat certified collections as part of Ansible platform subscription. So in, in the moment where you actually want to use Ansible, not just for setting up the system, that is where you should actually look into the Ansible uh, and some platform subscription uh, to get access to the, the certified co collections and use them as a basis for your end-to-end -end orchestration. And uh, this is actually something which we do not alone, but where again, uh, we want to do that together with partners. And so we reach back to SAP and a few of our founding members to create an upstream community. Uh, which is uh, now led out of the SAP Linux lab, but where we have other partners like Azure or, S or SVA joining uh, to actually you know, use that community approach to further develop the list of models and roles and collections uh, which are usable for SAP Day 2 content. 
uh, and then depending on the, on the needs of our customers and partners and the quality of what is happening in the upstream community, we will then pull that further down into the Red Hat subscription. So pretty much the same what we do also for our technologies in Red Hat, uh, where we want to innovate in the upstream open source community and then provide value in the subscription by uh, pulling that through a QA and through a documentation process and ensuring that we have that secure supply chain also for that, that content which we then provide through the corresponding subscription. And with that, um, I just picked a few examples and probably could go on to talk a little bit more, but I think what, what should be very visible that actually what SAP and Red Hat is doing and is demanding as part of the SAP Rise and S4 transformation is pretty much aligned also with what we have as a strategic pillars in our Red Hat portfolio. So it's supporting you with a hybrid cloud infrastructure, which is scalable, which is secure, which helps you to manage. So that is based um, uh, or which this is uh, linking to the examples which I had been given around the operating system, around RHEL, about working with, with our cloud cloud providers uh, and, and our partner ecosystem. Uh, it's helping you to extend SAP into the cloud by um, yeah, giving you a platform where you can um, yeah, build applications which connect or enhance the SAP environment all the way into the simplification of SAP where we tightly integrate with the idea of proactive analytics and monitoring and management from an infrastructure point of view and provide the corresponding tools and best practices uh, how you actually can run and manage those SAP, those SAP systems. And um, just to add a few numbers here, what this means, so uh, there's a uh, research done by IDC uh, by applying all those technologies uh, with uh, yeah, integration automation uh, in a context of an enterprise workload uh, you can actually uh, get quite some quite some benefits all the way from the IT, IT operation and IT effectiveness through the agility of your development teams if it goes into the extent extensibility uh, and of course also on the business side by, by applying automation integration will also help you to actually save costs and uh, reach higher productivity. And with that I just wanted to leave you with a little bit more talk if you want to listen in. Uh, so where are all those partners which we had been working with where we also recorded several um, online sessions which you can just tap into on YouTube, how this looks on Azure or how this uh, actually works with, um, with some, some other of the cloud, cloud providers uh, or if you do it on-prem how you can use Ansible to uh, roll it out in your own data center and would now open it up for any kind of questions which you may have. We still have 50 minutes uh, to round out the session. Thanks. Questions? Uh, yes. Regarding the key chain for SAP, mm -hmm. like, uh, is it also available under virtualization or It is, um, yes. So we do, so we have. Uh, operating system, uh, we have a RHEL HA add-on, which is a pacemaker cluster, we have our S HA solutions for SAP, which is then the resource agents to connect to SAP and to um, monitor, and, and, and then you also need to take an action. I need you, you need to fence the system and you need to actually switch over. That requires an integration with the corresponding underlying infrastructure. And so we do have that for the bare metal. We do that for our partners like, like, like VMware. We also work with our cloud providers. So if you run SAP on Azure or AWS or now IB, IB, IBM Cloud, that is the work which our team is doing uh, to ensure that the HA solutions with the corresponding resource agents are capable to actually run and fence on those environments. So the short answer is yes. Uh, with a little asterisk, um, I mean, um, there are dozens of cloud providers. There are also different hypervisors and different technologies. So uh, you should look into the nodes, which actually state which are the partners which had been enabled. 
VMware, yes, bare metal, yes, the major hyperscaler, yes, uh, but there may be some smaller providers where this is not the case, so that's why you should go back onto the corresponding pages and look up for what are the technologies which, which are supported. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Yes? Do you have experience to migrate SAP from SLES to Red Hat? We do, yes. So, we're, uh, so if we go to the customer, um, customer case studies links which I have, uh, there are two or three case studies which actually yeah, are about customers migrating from our operating systems to RHEL, uh, in, including also SLES. And I mean, it's... Um, Basically, if it comes to the SAP application, SAP has a multi-vendor strategy where you support several operating systems. So that's why, from an application point of view, it is uh, um, yeah, ensured that there is a way to go from one to the other. And from a tooling point of view, we also have a of our, your tools and best practices available. Actually, there is even a white paper which is specific to that example, which you can, can look into how you would migrate to a real operating system for your S4 environment. Anything else? All right. I thank you for being here. And uh, if you want to hear more, we have one session starting in 10 minutes, uh, which talks a little bit broader about workloads. So this one was now about SAP. And we will have another one, which then also includes uh, MS SQL into, into the picture and the work which we do with some other workloads, uh, which uh, more or less picks up on the same idea of what we do with performance tuning and automation to support those kind of workloads. Um, and otherwise, I wish you a great rest of the event. Thank you.